You know, my favorite bite in all of walleye fishing isn't so much a place or really even the size of the fish. What it is, is when you can go somewhere, pitch a jig out, and a walleye hit that jig so hard that it actually makes your line tick, the tick bite. And so I wanted to go somewhere this spring and get a tick bite. And so I thought about a tournament we had last year in Lake Sakakawi and all the fish we caught. Called up my good friend from North Dakota, Jim Carroll, and I said, hey, let's go out on Sakakawi, find some fish, and get some tick bites. We're actually in a kind of a transitionary time frame. It's a couple weeks after spawn. The fish are moving down the reservoir. We're going to try and intercept them. So we're going to be doing a lot of searching with electronics. We're going to be pitching our jig shallow, deep, wherever we see those fish. And I tell you what, I hope we get a bunch of tick bites, and I want to show you the next bite. <laughs> And I tell you what, the monsters are in here. You know, this is a popular fishing area with all these lakes around here. <laughs> That's so awesome! As often as he can, Keith Cabayas tries to find a way to make his pilgrimage to chase walleyes in the vast reservoir of Lake Sakakawea in beautiful North Dakota. So this is what we call getting pants. The fish bites it and pulls down your bait a little bit. This is what I call short pants. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest reasons is because the system is so incredibly diverse depending on the time of year. I'm not going to get the net until you tell me. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. If it's a walleye, it's, it's a... It's a big one. With so much surface area and various types of shoreline, there is just a lot of different things that the walleyes and bait fish can be doing. <laughs> on, get the nets coming Wait. up the side here. Well, looks an awful lot like a walleye. <laughs> you really can call fish, you know that. Yeah, well, well, not today, apparently. <laughs> this is what makes their early post-spawning periods so special. Even though they are migrating back into the main lake, they are typically more easily located since they are still traveling in larger schools. Yeah. He had it straight in his mouth, though, and a long way in. Oh, I mean, uh, let me see if I can just get it out of there. It's a ways down. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. That's that, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, brown back, brown I think. Back. Kind of a weird name for that, yeah. but a uh, max scent uh, tail. He smoked it. I, I don't think I've seen many jig fish in my life bite it that far down into he his throat. He was just called. He, want, he wanted it back. What was really weird is you had him hooked in the mouth, but yet he's over here, over there, running all over the place. Like, <laughs> Like a northern, it seems like every time I fish with you, we get a fish that does this, acts like a northern, and then it's well, a big walleye. Well, then it walleye. turns out to be a big walleye. <laughs> <laughs> so here on Lake Sakakawea, we're in the post-spawn period. And what happens in the spring on Lake Sakakawea is a lot of fish will run way out to the western end of the reservoir, maybe even up the Yellowstone River or the Missouri River. They'll spawn and then start moving back down the reservoir as the water warms. This end of the lake is much shallower than the eastern end of the lake, so the water warms pretty quickly. And so when that water temperature gets in about the mid 50s to the 60 degree range, those fish will really start moving. We're chasing a moving target. It's a wave of fish. And we want to use our electronics to look for these fish. And typically what we see here is all the fish are together. So if you get in an area where you're catching a bunch of white bass, northern pike or other things, there's probably some walleyes around too. And then you'll move into an area where you really don't see a whole lot. And those are the areas you want to avoid. Even if they look good, there just may not happen to be a bunch of fish in that area. So we want to use our electronics and we want to move, move, move to catch these fish. There's one. Did you get him? <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> there he is. Oh, yeah. Well, I couldn't really get that far. I know. I'm going to bring him up again. There he, there he comes. You're doing good here. Oh, we're going to like that one. 
Well, <laughs> nice, we might like that Nice one. rod holder action. All right, one more time, James. Here I wasn't we go. used to that one. There we go. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. We'll let you practice that jig or netting a little bit. Well, I tell you what, look at you can tell by the way the jig is in his mouth, that jig in there. I mean, he just throttled it. There was no doubt about it out there. I lifted it up, and as it was gliding down, he just ratcheted it. I love it. Let's see if I can get this bad boy out of here. Buried. It is buried. I got a good hook set though. So that was a good thing. It's just in the top of his mouth. <laughs> oh, it's on that Max Send Minnow. You know, they added that more flavor to it, I guess. When we were biting them off earlier, you could kind of tell kind of garlic and salt. And yeah. Obviously, the fish like it too because he chomped it. He just chomped it. He really hit it. So. Now we'll get him back in. It looks like he could use a little bit more meat, couldn't he? Yeah. He isn't chunky like some of them are here, but he'll do. He'll do. Great fight. I mean, what a hit. All right, buddy. Go on back down there and play with your friends. There you go. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley catch more fish and motor guide accuracy matters closed captioning for the next bite is provided by power pole the ultimate in shallow water anchors So we got a lot of reservoir to work with here. I mean, Jim was saying 180 some miles of reservoir. So obviously you just don't want to go and just start pitching your jig anywhere. And there's a lot of great looking stuff here, bluffs and points and all kinds of places. But because these fish are moving, you got to spend some time graphing. So what I like to do is just simply move along here. I'm zigzagging in and out from, I would say about 10 feet out to 15 feet, back and forth. And what I'm looking for is fish. Now, what can be a little tricky here on the reservoir is that there is a lot of rock coming off of these bluffs and so many times when you look on your screen you're gonna see things that kind of look like fish little bumps on the bottom but they can actually be rock and so what I do is use a combination of things for that when I see those bumps like that if I'm not seeing a fish suspended up off the bottom what I do is I look at my my side scan and a lot of times you'll see the rock coming off of shore then the little gap underneath your boat and then the other side of the rock on the other side and that's right where these little bumps showed up, you can be pretty sure you just went over a little rock pile. Now in any case, when you mark something that you think are fish, what I like to do is then move upwind. I simply use my XI-5, I hit the anchor mode, so I'm upwind just to cast, and I cast right back to where I think those marks were. Might make 10 or 15 casts, and then off I go and start graphing again. So by pinpointing these fish on your units first, then anchoring above them, you can be real efficient finding these fish that could literally be anywhere. I got one. No way. <laughs> First cast? First cast, second pump. <laughs> it's kind of shaking. Ah, it's kind of shaking like a like a white bass. Although it's you it posted. It's staying down. Yeah, man. We marked those ones. I pitched it up there and boom. Yeah, first cast here. Circling around like a walleye now. It's kind of bouncing like a white bass at first, but now it's, I believe. It's hunkered, man. It's hunkered. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. This wall, wall. I believe. First pitch, boom. I can't believe he got the first cast in before I did. <laughs> here he comes. Nice. Nice. Oh, oh, that's a big reach. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, man! <Yeah. laughs> Look at Envy! And he wow. snarfed it in there. I'm glad you convinced me to switch colors there. That was a good one right I there. I can't believe you got the first cast in. It, it was kind of cool because we came down. It's not. It's nothing on shore. There's no point. There's yeah. no nothing. We just were kind of graphing down here about five miles an hour. Marked what looked like a few fish. I didn't see any rock on the structure scan, so we yeah. kind of knew they were fish. One pitch up. Whoa, about two hops. <laughs> yeah. One pitch, two hops. Whoa. Another beautiful Sakakawea fish. Oh, that is a good fish, but you can tell they're well spawned out. Yeah. I mean, this one's starting to put back on a little bit of weight, but you know, it's probably well, two weeks ago that they yeah. spawned out, so now they're heading down the reservoir, and that's a nice fish right there. Yeah, it is. Really good. Well, I'm gonna get her back in the water, and we'll get another one maybe. Maybe, maybe we'll so. get another one. <laughs> 
Alright, thank you for the great fight. Thank you for the great tick. And goodbye. <laughs> so we're using the precision trolling app. The Real Deal brought to you by Precision Trolling Data, giving anglers the real deal on crankbait diving depth information. As power poles gain popularity around the Midwest, in bass and walleye boats, one of the things that I still think is uh, almost forgotten about sometimes is this drift paddle. Something to slow presentations down. Now of course it's going to be something great to use in situations where you're used to using drift socks. For instance, maybe I'm going to pull spinners out in the open water on Green Bay and I want to go 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 miles an hour. And if we're trolling with some big waves, which there is a lot of times up here, you're going too fast. That drift pedal is obviously going to slow your drift down and keep you in the strike range. There's a few other scenarios where I think that this is a really, really good tool, and that might be if you're casting a shoreline where you're maybe fishing a windblown shoreline, maybe pitching jigs to weeds, casting cranks to rocks. You can use this to slow that drift down as well. Even though you're not trolling, you're casting, you're able to cover the water more thoroughly, and that can be so key when you're fishing little structure areas. Another situation, something that we've definitely seen recently, is fishing in a river where there's current. Obviously, you have current going one direction. The wind never seems to be going that direction. But there'll be some times where if that wind is blowing up against the current, it's almost going to want to start spinning the boat. So we've actually put this pole down with the paddle and almost used it as a rudder to make sure whatever way you're going to fish, if you're going to pull a little bit upstream, that it holds the boat straight. It's just going to help you fish more methodically, fish the way you want to fish. But this drift paddle, there really isn't hardly any techniques that it's not going to help you out and f make you fish more thoroughly. Hey, while Keith's graphing along here looking for fish, let me talk a little bit about the setup we're using today. We have a six foot three inch rod, medium light power with a fast tip. And I like that fast tip because it's very sensitive. You know, we're throwing a pretty light jig here, eighth ounce or a quarter ounce jig. The outrageous bites you're gonna feel, but those tougher mush bites, sometimes when they pin something to the bottom, that fast tip will really help you feel um, that bite. Line is 10 pound high vis nano. And the reason why we're using nano is because it's thinner than any other line and it casts better. So when we're dealing with wind like we have this afternoon here, that thin line will cut through the air and allow us to cast at off angles towards a bank even though if we have a, a bow in our line and still feel, feel the fish bite. On the business end, we've got a fluorocarbon leader and the reason why we use fluorocarbon is because it has a little bit of stretch, adds a little stretch into our system so if we're dealing with a really big fish. And then the other thing that's great about fluorocarbon is very abrasion resistant. We've been casting into a lot of rocks and this uh, fluorocarbon will take that beating on the rocks but a lot better than uh, say a monofilament line will. Fishing for migrating walleyes takes time. There is a great deal of searching involved. Since the fish can move up to a mile or two overnight, sometimes more. Well, what do you got? I don't know. A spinner. You spin you in. Looks wally. like a nice walleye to me. And Lake Sakakawea has something like 1,300 miles of shoreline and a reported 480 square miles of surface area. But the simplicity of this chase, thanks to these mixed species of fish still traveling in larger waves this time of year, is the beauty of this post-spawn bite, even if the walleye's emerging lure of choice is nothing short of ugly. That has got to be one of the ugliest combinations <laughs> possibly in walleye fishing right there. An orange with a brown top jig with a brown, I think that's called brown top. Brown top, yeah. Brown top minnow. Quite what? possibly the ugliest combination ever, <laughs> but it is catching It fish. is catching walleyes. Using a combination of sonar and side scan screens has been clutch in separating what appears to be schools of fish from the vast fields of western reservoir rock found throughout the sprawling system. There's one. Oh, it's kind of... Kind of did some weird there. <laughs> Giving Keith and Jim even greater odds of elevating their patterning by beginning to whittle down what types of retrieves are appearing more effective. <laughs> Is it coming up in a circle? No. No, that, lo oh, that looks good. <laughs> Come on here. There's not. It's not a chance. It's a walleye. Oh, yeah. yeah, I saw a white tip there. 
Here it comes. Here we go. Nice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of was a weird one. Yeah. I mean, he just he picked it up off the bottom, and he must have been turned when I first felt him. I set the hook, and he kind of pulled off, like yeah. two or three feet off. And I'm like, what the heck? But he must have just been. Because after that, he fought just fine. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a fun one. Fun little fish there. There. He's happy to see me. Look at her. So. I mean, that's this very common fish here in, in Lake okay. Sakakawi. I mean, hopefully we get some bigger ones, but just a nice chunky, if you're eating fish, couldn't beat that, could you? No. <laughs> there we go, good fish. You know, when we first started out, Jim and I were probably being a little too finessey with these fish. We were fishing light eighth ounce jigs. Uh, one of us was fishing a live minnow. One was fishing just a three inch gulp minnow. You know, nothing real aggressive at all. Just trying to mimic real minnows out there. And we were getting a few bites, but what we found out is we went to actually to a heavier jig, a quarter ounce jig. And then we went to one of these max scent minnows. They got a lot more action to them, a lot more movement to them. It's called a flat nose minnow. And what we started to do is actually work our rod much more aggressively to get the action that's triggering these fish. Simply cast it out there, you let your jig drop down to the bottom, you will actually see your line collapse when it hits the bottom, but then you just reel down and you give it a pretty good hard stroke, but then the key is, is not to drop your rod tip. Stroke it up and just hold that rod tip up in the air. What that does is make that jig jump off the bottom, kind of attract some, but then when you hold your rod tip still, it makes it glide back to you. And all during that glide, those fish can see that bait and if they bite it, you're gonna get a nice tick bite. If it hits the bottom, many times they go down and pin it on the bottom because they think it's a dying bait. And then when you go to stroke again, you'll just feel them and your stroke is almost a hook set. So sometimes, even though we're fishing fairly early in the year here, not with super warm water, sometimes going a little bit more aggressive can put a lot more fish in the boat. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, accuracy matters. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. We fish all kinds of bodies of water, but a lot of fishing in the United States is done on smaller bodies of water, and many of those aren't mapped very well. This is the new Genesis Live. Genesis Live gives you the capability of drawing the contours right before your eyes as you fish or as you graph around. Even though your, your small lake might not be mapped very well, it doesn't have a very good map, as you explore the lake or as you fish certain drop-offs and pieces of structure, this unit will draw detail out right before your eyes in real time. So mapping has come a long way. You don't have to send in maps anymore and, and hope a computer makes them for you. You can do it all live, real time, with real information that's pertinent today when we're on the water. Playing a game of cat and mouse with bands of wandering walleyes has not only been necessary, but also a focused advantage as well for pitching jigs on Lake Sakakawea in spring. One pitch, <laughs> two hops, <laughs> whoop! Before having a chance to further disperse throughout the reservoir, Keith Cavias and Jim Carroll have been able to more easily locate these migrating waves of fish. This is a smelt, and this is the tail we're using, the flat nose minnow. You can see they're almost the same length, they're almost the same color, the blue and the walleyes. Which, while are still a moving target, are predominantly holding in about 10 to 15 feet of water. That's the one we're looking for, right there. Come on, baby. Come on up here. Come on, oh, baby. Oh, jeez, it's a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a beast. That is a big, big fish. This is a beautiful walleye on one 
ugly, ugly jig. I still think that's one of the ugliest combinations I've the ever seen. Brown back strikes. The brown back. But look what it struck. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a big girl. That is a big, big girl. And we've had to actually search around quite a bit. The last yeah. couple hours haven't been exactly easy. It's been a lot of empty I mean, water. just a lot of graphing yeah. and a lot of pitching. And finally, we found the right spot. And I mean, they're just a beautiful fish. Yeah. She's got a little weight that she needs to put on, but she's got the length. Unreal. She dropped her eggs and came back down the reservoir, and we tracked her down. So, I mean, it was a great time out here fishing out here. Uh, you know, I came out last year for a tournament. Jim got to come out this year. Um, these fish are migratory. You have to keep moving. You have to keep looking. But if you look long enough, you can get the big ones. That's a great fish right there. We'll get her back in the water and, and probably call her a day. Probably. It's a great day of fishing, young man. All right, <laughs> good job. Let's get this girl back in here so she can go off in her happy way. Thank you for the big old tick bite there, young lady. Thank you very much. Ordering. Just a eater. Just a wally. Even the little ones are just snarfing that thing. Just snarfing it. They want it. They're mad at that max in there. Eh? Looks big, doesn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> I like it. Eating it. Yeah. Walleye. A walleye. Jim, I got one. It's a nice fat walleye. That's how we roll. You know, after we, especially after we switch to the, uh, to the, uh... A quarter ounce up to, say, 3 eighths ounce size. All righty. Okay, stop. Yeah. Now, in any case, when you mark fish that you, or some, what you want to do is move upwind, then I put out my anchor. The incredible netable. Pretty funny looking uh, white, white bass. bass. Yeah. <laughs> Lego, my ego. You said to get the net. I didn't say get the net. I just said... Uh, it's always being optimistic. The Next Bite.tv features seasonal articles, videos, and even full episodes. Whether it's catching up on the latest in tackle and techniques, reviewing your favorite past episodes, or seeing what is coming up just around the corner. For everything related to The Next Bite, check us out online or on Facebook at The Next Bite TV.